The word of God says where the praises go up. Where the praises go up. The blessings come down. You have to open up your mouth. Put your hands together. Stomp your feet because you're able to stand up. There are many persons who want to be able to be in the house of God this evening. But they can't. And so we count it a privilege that we're living in a land that we're able to open our mouths and freely worship. Nobody got to persecute us for calling the name of Jesus. We can get up and we can open up our mouth and shout, Jesus! There's some countries that people that dare shout the name of Jesus, you're shot dead. You're stoned. All man of evil. But we can freely say the name of Jesus. Let's take a minute and just talk to the Lord individually. Let us tell him how much we love him. Let us tell him how much we thank him. Yes, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We exalt your name, mighty God. Lord, let the praises flow from our lips this evening. Let our worship be true. Mighty God, I pray, Lord, that you'll show up and show out as you normally do. The shackles are broken, Holy Spirit. Somebody is set free. We release a special anointing over this place right now. From row to row, from bench to bench. Holy Spirit, you are in control. This is your house. We relinquish the program over to you, mighty God. And we say, have your way tonight. Every depressing spirit. Every heavy spirit. Every spirit that is not of you, take your flight right now. You are not welcome in this place. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord has authority. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands above our heads and we give the Holy Spirit a hand clap offering? the worship team. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Can somebody call his name? Jesus. Jesus. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus in this place tonight. Jesus. If Jesus has done something for you and if your shackles has been broken, if your burden has been rolled away, give God a praise. Lift your hands. Can you hear me down there? Can you hear me? Wave your hands if you can hear me. Praise God. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 
Lord, we bless you. We glorify you. We, we give your praise. We acknowledge your presence here with, with us this evening, Lord. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. We bless your holy name. We place you at the highest place this evening because you are the great high priest. We lift you up, Lord God, this evening and we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Worship you. We call your name, Holy Father. We bless you this evening. There is none like you, God. There is none like you, Jesus. So we say, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, there is something about the name Proclaim. 
call his name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Though the battle may be hot and the conflict so, don't rock the road. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Though the battle may be hard and the conflict so, don't rock in the road. Travel along, hold on a little longer. Take Jesus at his word, he'll carry me through, right through to the promised land. Hold on, the battle may be hard, and the conflict so.
Shout, 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 shout all over, all over, hallelujah, oh Jesus, we have heard the joyful sound, Jesus save, you want to ring it out tonight, Jesus save, touch your neighbor and say Jesus save, touch somebody and tell them Jesus save, Touch somebody you do that who know how you who you're gonna touch beside you. The person beside you might not be saved. Just tell them Jesus save. Jesus save, Jesus save. Lift your hands, Jesus save, Jesus save. We have heard a joyful sound. Jesus save, Jesus save, spread the glass. It's all around Jesus says Jesus says Obey the news To every land Climb the steps And cross the waves On what teams For Lord's command Jesus says Jesus says Jesus says, 
Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, what did you come here for tonight? What did you come here for tonight? Uh, somebody would ask their neighbor tonight. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, what did you come here for tonight? Uh, we, don't need a, we don't need a spectators in the house of God tonight. We don't need any observers in the house of God tonight. We need some people who came and needed to be delivered tonight. Yes. Is there someone who came here seeking the face of the Lord tonight? 
No, no, that's all fake, fake. Is there somebody who came here tonight needing to be break free? Yes, Let me ask a question one more time. Is there somebody who came here tonight that is sick of being sick and tired? Is there someone who came here tonight that needs the Lord to show up tonight? Or you won't be able to make it tomorrow. Then why won't you open up your mouth? Hallelujah. And lift your voices. And shout to the heavens. That tonight is your night. Somebody hear me. Is there, is there volume in this mic tonight? I, I said, why won't you get up out of your seat? Change your position. Every night you come out to the same seat. In the same bench. And nothing that I want for you. Shift your position, somebody. Get, get up. Somebody walk around the place, huh? So I just walk around the place. Spirit of the big God. If you don't show up tonight, God. If you don't show up tonight. You don't show up tonight, God. Come on. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. 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 The place feels heavy. The place feel heavy. The place feel heavy.
gonna be gone. And I them Lord remember the song praise oh God tonight cover them under your blood tonight Jesus my God your word that will be read tonight oh God I pray oh God that you will drip your rich blood all over it tonight oh God Father God and as your word go forth tonight Lord I pray oh God that you will anoint your daughter tonight anoint her in a very special way oh God you have been using her Lord Jesus over the past days and I pray, oh God, that tonight, oh God, will Lord God be another night, Lord God, where she minister to your people in no uncertain way. Father God, clear the atmosphere tonight, Jesus. My God, whatever it is that is not of you tonight, oh God, remove it tonight, Jesus. And let your people worship you tonight, oh God, in the beauty of holiness. Let your Shekinah glory come down and fill this place tonight, oh God. Cover us, you have never covered before, Lord God. Father God, those who are coming, ace their footsteps, Lord. Father God, speak to the heart of your people again, we pray. My God, remove everything that is not of you tonight, oh God. And let your will be done tonight, Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, for a free spirit, Lord God, that will fall in this place tonight, Lord God. Cover again as we lead and as you lead and you direct tonight, oh God. We look to you tonight for a special blessing. Father God, and let the blessing flow as it had never flowed before. Hear our cry tonight, Jesus, as we look to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. He will leave it into your hands and tell your thanks in Jesus' holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we'll invite Sister Maxine Mitchell to come with the ninth scripture. As you remain standing for the word of the Lord. 
Aleluia. God is good. And all the time. Come on, somebody. God is good. And all the time. worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. The scripture reading tonight comes from the book of Romans chapter 8, reading from verses 1 to 11. Praise God. There is therefore now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 11th and ending. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here in the, th the reading of a portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. Somebody who came here today uh, that came in sorrow. Anybody came with some sorrow today? Anybody came with pain this evening? Anybody came feeling sick this evening? Nobody? Anybody came feeling stressed out? Uh huh. You feel stressed out? Anybody feel hungry? Anybody feel tired? Wait, wait, let me see all those who feel tired. Stand up. Let me see all those who are hungry, stand up. 
Let me all the water, a financial breakthrough, stand up. And let me see who needs a job tomorrow morning, stand up. Let me see who have a husband that needs to be seen. Let me see who have a child that needs to be saved. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Let me see who need a husband. Let me see who need a wife. Whatever it is that you came here needed tonight, let us stand to our feet. Let us change and shift the atmosphere. As we say, we're trading it for the joy of the Lord. And so we sing, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Greetings. This evening is the Sand Park Church in charge. Clap them. <laughs> And I am your moderator, Reverend Mikhail Heidel. Did I clap me? <laughs> but before I make you fully welcome, I want to welcome and greet uh, the newly appointed host pastor. Uh, he was introduced last night for the Santa Park Church, Reverend Mullins and his beautiful wife, Sister Mullins. Uh, in the same breath to also invite him to greet the crusade. Please make Reverend Mullins welcome as he comes. Can the church of God shout a hallelujah? Come on, somebody shout a hallelujah. Come on, if you are free tonight, shout a hallelujah. God is a good God. I'm in church, and the devil is a bad devil. Nothing that the devil does can ever be good. But we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. I'm in church. It's good to be in Eastwood Park tonight. And it's good to be worshiping with the Sandy Park Church as well. Put your hands together for the Lord, everybody. I want to greet the Spirit of the Lord tonight that is evident among us. Last night was tremendous, and we expect a great time tonight. I must greet also the angel of this house, Bishop Clark and his family, and all the council members, Pastor Brown and her husband, everyone, Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
when Gideon was uh, hiding from the Assyrians threshing wheat, the angel of the Lord comes to him and said, Mighty man of valor. Yes, and it's time to get up and win the battle. I want to tell somebody tonight that we have the power to break free. Come on, tell somebody we've got the power to break free. Come on, tell somebody as we've got the power to break free. Yes, if the enemy comes, let him come because we are a mighty man of valor. Come on, church of God, flex your muscles and say mighty man of valor. Yes, we have the power to break free. And so tonight, I say to all those um, in social media and those in the congregation tonight that we are coming out and I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. God bless you and God bless you tonight and have a great night in the word of God. Big up my friend, Reverend Heidel, and it's good to be worshiping with you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. It's like you're going to get ready for preaching, don't it? Like you're ready for start a sermon. Bless the Lord. Uh, first of all, let me just ask for us to stand to our feet as we welcome the Holy Spirit. It's customary for me. Put our hands above our heads. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. This is the Holy Spirit's house. <laughs> and we just thank the Holy Spirit tonight. This is the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, I would like to make, well, welcome and thank, of course, our district overseer, senior pastor for this Wonderful church, the Eastwood Park New Testament Church of God, Reverend Dr. Clement Clark and his wife and family. Give him a round of applause in his absence. Of course, he is uh, ably assisted and by our associate pastor, the one and only lovely Mrs. Jennifer Brown. Reverend Brown. And of course, her husband, Minister Brown upstairs. Give a round of applause as well. I have not seen the other, oh, our DO is here. Okay, I have not seen the other ministers um, as yet, but I want to also welcome our pastors, council members, and their families. Make them a round of applause, get a round of applause as well. Okay. Do we have any special guests in our midst tonight? Anyone coming here for the first time tonight? First time visitors, please stand. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's shake hands better than that. They're coming here for the first time tonight. Oh, welcome to the EPR Church. It's a pleasure to have you here with us tonight in our crusade. And we pray that the Lord will manifest upon your life that which he has planned for you. Amen. We want to also greet uh, the virtual platform, the YouTube, all our YouTube members. All our members of the diaspora who are watching live right now, give them a round of applause as well. Trust me, they are watching and they are enjoying. As the Reverend would like to call them, not last but not certain, last but not certain, not least, or VIP. Oh, VVIP, thank you, Trish. Or VVIPs, please stand where they are. 
VVIPs. Hello. These are our VVIPs. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. We're so happy that you're able to join us tonight. God bless you, and we are still so proud of you. Amen? I think I would have covered that in our uh, welcome. Anybody felt left out? If you feel left out, I apologize. Not intentional. Reverend Clark is here. Somebody clap, Reverend Clark. Bishop. Bishop Clark. Bishop Clark. <laughs> yeah, you can't clap him again. Clap him again. <laughs> so we just want to make sure you, you, you got welcome, you know? All right. Uh, the President Worship Team. Can you give them a round of applause as well? And our musicians. And also our AV team. Hey, the AV team, quick, you know? As soon as there's a scripture, boom. As soon as there is a chorus, boom. Right there. We love them so much. Praise the worship team, it's your time to come. We have the theme song, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me remind us of the theme for our crusade tonight as you see the theme song. It's time to break free. But can I tell somebody something tonight? If you don't have a mindset to break free, then you won't break free. It's like a man that is locked up in a prison cell. And he has made up his mind that come what may is going to escape. And if it takes him 10 years, little by little, he starts to dig away at that Amen. hole in the wall. Amen. Every day, I must get out of here. But it starts, freedom starts in the mind. Amen. So if you have come here tonight and you have not had a made up mind that you're sick and tired of your present situation, then it makes no sense. Because unless you want a change, the change will not come. You have to want to change as well. So I encourage you, whatever you want, set your mind right. As you edit to the theme song, praise and worship to you.
wanna speak. I just wanna speak the name of Jesus. Over every fear, I'll ask the answer. Over every fear and anxiety. To every soul, to every soul that captive by the pressure. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. Your name, your name, your name is power. Your, your name is healing. Your name is life. Break, 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 break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Your name, your name, your name is power. Your name, your name is healing. healing. Your name, your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Shout, 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 shout. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Come on, shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over Strong! 
Jesus in the mountain, Jesus in the streets, Jesus on our fan over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, Jesus for my family. Oh, my depression, I speak the holy, holy name. name, Jesus. Say Jesus. Somebody shout his name. Can somebody call his name? Jesus. Somebody shout his name. Can somebody call his name? Jesus. Can somebody shout his name? Somebody shout his name. Jesus, 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout the name. Shout the name. Shout the name. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 say, Jesus, 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 My brothers and sisters, you may be seated if you can. Hey, oh. ma, 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 ma. This is why I don't like to moderate because I, I don't know how to apologize to the Holy Spirit. Mm. Ma <laughs> Brother Brown, please come. Hey! What a lovely name. 
the name of Jesus. Reaching higher far than the brightest star. Sweeter than the song we sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim. Hallelujah. What a lovely name. I greet you well in the name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it is always a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercies endureth forever. It's time to worship the Lord in giving. Just like to remind us that we don't give to be blessed. But we give because we are blessed. Amen. And the word of the Lord reminds us that when we give he will give back to us good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will he cause men to pour into us and so tonight i encourage all of us to give generously to give willingly to give with a spirit of joy as we share in the collective effort of winning the lost for at any cost. Amen. Also, the ushers have envelopes that they will be giving out to you so that you can place your special offering for the final night of our crusade which is tomorrow so make sure that all of all of us all of you take an envelope and we're asking you to put something tangible in there for tomorrow as we close out our crusade 2023 for this friday amen so my brothers and sisters may i invite you to Take your offering out, bow your heads with me as we ask the Lord to bless that which we have. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you one more time. Lord, we know you're not tired of hearing us. So we bow at your feet, Lord. We come to offer ourselves to you and our substance. So Lord, we ask that your people this evening will be joyful in giving to the cause of kingdom building. Oh God, we understand that whatever we do financially in winning one soul, it would be worth it all. So Lord, we ask you to bless the givers and bless the offering and everybody say, Amen. Thank you very much. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. I know he delivers. Yeah. 
So I shout hallelujah again. It is the highest praise. It is the highest praise. It is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Run up and down and help me praise. 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 kind of church this was. I thought it was that Holy Ghost uh, sanctified, sanctified uh, hand clapping church. So as soon as we start up on everybody start up on door. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Coming to us at this time as I decrease and let uh, welcome uh, and clear the way for the Lord to have his way. Coming to us at this time is uh, to or see the pastor, Bishop Dr. Clement Clark, with our greetings and uh, introduction of speaker. Clearly out of which, the men in praise, the sons of praise choral, will take their place under the instruction of Dr. Clark. Please make welcome Bishop Dr. Clark as you take charge at this moment. God bless you. Thank you so much, Reverend I Heidel. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. It's great to be in the house of the Lord another time. And we are winding down. And God is still winding up. Yes, he's not finished with us at all. Um, it's great to be in the house another night. And we are looking for something extraordinary tonight. Anybody's looking for the extraordinary? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me say thanks to the Sandy Park um, New Testament Church of God. They have led out this evening and we want to thank Reverend Heidel for leading the charge. Uh, yes, you can give them a hand. Applause 
We bless God for them, the small church in our district, and we want to give them as much support as we can. I want to recognize our associate pastor, Reverend Jennifer Brown, and, um, and Brother Brown. I want to recognize the other ministers who are in the house. I want to greet all the members of the church and pastors council and their spouses. I want in a very special way to greet those who are VIPs, those who have been baptized and those who have gotten saved since the crusade has started. Could you please stand um, at this time, all those who have... <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. It is such a delight to see those. Because my brothers and sisters, that's what predominantly crusade is all about. Yes, Seeing persons one to the kingdom of God. Yes, we love people filled with the Holy Ghost and we love people revived, get their, you know, their deliverance. Um, but more than anything else, we want them to be delivered from sin. Yes. Hallelujah. And so we give God the glory for what he has done so i want to just welcome you specially in in the house i want to just greet all my brothers and sisters who are here from all the different churches i know that there are a number of churches represented here this evening wherever you are from i want you to know that we appreciate you this evening we are delighted that you could take the time out to come and share with us and we certainly believe you have been blessed so far, but God is not through with you yet. There is yet more blessing to receive this evening. Um, I want to greet the online audience. My brothers and sisters, as I have been saying, this audience continues to get larger and larger and larger. And so one of my students today said that I need to add them to, I need to add them to the online membership. <laughs> so, yes, uh, and that membership is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we want to praise God for them. Put your hands together for them and let them know how much we appreciate them. I want to say to you, online audience god bless you we love you we appreciate you thanks for your continued support and everything that you have been doing and we ask you to continue to send out the link send out the don't stop sending it out um, because we're not through as yet um we culminate this week tomorrow but we are back here on sunday evening right because we want to um, make sure that we get as much as we can before we um, let you know there be any cooling of the fervor. So we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, and we look forward to seeing you um, as we close out Sunday in the day and then Sunday night. All right, because Sunday in the day is still crusade, on you know. Hello. Yes, yeah, so please invite everybody who you can and let them know that right in Sunday service we're carrying on crusades same way. All right, so send out the link, ask them to subscribe because when they subscribe, it's easier. The link will usually just pop up most of the times as soon as you go on. So, um, God bless you and it's always a pleasure to have you. My brothers and sisters, thanks for 
the gifts that you have been giving and I don't know if I told you that we cleared last week's um, debt, if you want to call it that, expenses. We cleared that well. You never let me down yet. I'm telling you, you have never let me down yet. And so you're not going to do it for the rest of this week. Is that right? All right. Um, permit me to, as I missed out, um, Reverend Travel Mullings, who, as I told you last evening, um, has assumed pastoral work at the Sandy Park Church as of yesterday. All right? Um, and so all that happened with the Sandy Park people was set up before he came. All right? So he watched it go by. But he's here tonight with his lovely wife, Kimberly. Could you please stand and face the people and let them see that you have good eyes, Rev? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> God bless you, Reverend Mullings. We look forward to working with you. All right, so I was saying that um, you have not let me down and, and, and you need, we just need to clear off the week now and then, you know, you know there will be some bills to pay after we conclude. Um, so we just want to tie up those um, between Friday and Sunday. So we ask you to you will be getting an envelope, and we ask you to put a good love gift in it as we clear up everything that after crusade we can rejoice and nobody will be in any trouble. All right? God bless you richly, my brothers and sisters. You continue to invite persons to the crusade, and this evening is no different. So for this evening, while well the Sons of Praise Chorale are coming, we have Norlene Watson, and she has one person. <laughs> Clap them like you're happy to have. God bless you, we're, we're delighted to have you, my dear. And then we have Bernita, Thomas with two. <laughs> Praise God. Sister Bernita continues to do well in that regard. We have um, Sister Rosemary Riley with two. <laughs> Praise God. We have Brother A. O'Connor with two. Where are the two? Oh, okay. All right. Come on. Put your hands together for them. God bless you, Brother O'Connor. Um, and then we have Sister Georgia Simpson with three. All right, come on, sit them down the back. And we have Sister Sandra Virgo with three. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. So, Sister Sandra and Sister Georgia, could you please come and get your little token? We want, we want you to know that we appreciate you. So come and get your token. God bless you richly as you continue to work for the master. God bless you, dear. Good work. Bless you, my dear. Good work. Okay, so please be reminded that at the end, 
at the end of So sorry, so sorry. All right, so I, wow. A, a paper was handed to me with Rosemary Mullings. Don't know if there's any relations. <laughs> Rosemary Mullings, could you please stand? With three. God bless you. And then with Sister Suzette Hutchinson, with two. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. You see, when you carry it, when I'm up here, that kind of disrupt it. So you, as soon as you come, you need to just go. And if, you're, if the person come in a little late, you go to Sister um, Banks. All right, because for me to accept it when I, I'm here, it's a little disconcerting. All right, so Sister Rosemary, if it's even in church, where were you? <laughs> All right, God bless you, and thank you so much for the, those additions. Um, continue. I say to you that at the end of the crusade, the person who was invited the most will get a lovely prize. All right, so please continue to do your very best. My brothers and sisters, it's past the preacher's time. And so we need to just present to you our preacher this evening. My brothers and sisters, we have to minister the word of God another night. She has been here from Sunday, and my goodness, she has caused a stir, both in the sanctuary and online. She has caused a big stir, and we want to say thanks to God for the anointing. My God, last night she was hoarse, and if you're here, her cut through. Oh my God, were you here? Yes. Oh my goodness, we thank God for her. And so we want to thank God for her. I, I don't want to go through. The time is gone. Um, she's from Westmoreland, Kingston, um, uh, America. <laughs> All wrapped up in, in, in one. Um, and then she has preached all over the world. All over the world in all different functions. And my brothers and sisters, God has touched her. And I, as I've told you, she has preached even. And that's the ultimate at our general assembly. I want to once again. Sir, please excuse me. Is that Reverend Sandra Knight? No, you're coming out of the church from a pastor. You're not telling me. Let me know. I beg your pardon. Could you please stand and let us welcome you, miss? I see him. She is the pastor for the Santa Hill New Testament Church of God, and she has members with her. Could you please stand? Um, God bless you. It's great to have you. Such a pleasure. And Reverend Easton Bishop, Easton Thompson, is also here. Do you have any members with you, Rev? No, not tonight. All right. Put your hands together for my good friend in ministry, Reverend Easton Thompson. God bless you. It's the preacher's time, my brothers and sisters. Um, and we really want to say how oh, delighted we are to have everybody who is here this evening. The... Sons of Praise Choral will be ministering to us at this time. And as soon as they are through, I'm going to ask you to stand. 
and just give a rousing round of applause to our preacher and just ask you to pray for her as God uses her to do his honor and to do his work. God bless you. Put your hands together for the son. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What more do you want him to do? Hallelujah. There's a man, his name, his name is Jesus. He used to live in this world, we are going to. He died and is gone to prepare a place. A place for you. What more do you want him to do, my Lord?
Jesus loves you Can't you see how he died for you? If you are sick, he'll make you well and save your soul, your soul from hell. What more do you want him to do? Yeah. tonight. Praise the name of our matchless God. I know that's a song we have heard over and over and over again, but it really is a very serious question. What more do we really want him to do? Seriously. Gave his life there is nothing else to do what more do we want him to do to prove that he really loves us he died on a cross to save the lost there really is nothing more and we hear these songs and we sing them but we have to grab them and make them greater yes. than the moment that makes us feel good. What more do we want him to do? What an amazing God we serve. Worthy of worship, worthy to be adored. I'm not talking about myself now. What an awesome God we serve. Worthy to be worshiped, worthy to be exalted, and worthy to be adored. We magnify the Lord in his house tonight. The Lord bless you. You may be seated in his presence tonight. We thank God for another opportunity, another privilege to be in his house, another time to come into worship 
and to magnify his name. We continue to thank him for his presence with us. Every time we get together, it would be a disaster if we come into his house and there was no indication of his presence in his house. But every time we come in and we call the name Jesus, every time we come in, we know the presence of God is in his house. So we magnify and we celebrate him tonight as we worship the Lord. We thank God for the shepherd of this house, the messenger of this house, Dr. Clement Clark, and for his wife, Sister Marsha Clark, in her absence. I've been begging all of you since Sunday though. Don't make me get miserable. No, let me come home and sound like I'm turning into a miserable old lady. But when we are going to honor God for his servants, we're going to put our hands together and do it right. There is absolutely nothing wrong in thanking God for those he has placed to lead us. So we honor them tonight as they serve God by serving us. Just leave that for another time and keep it moving right along. For all the ministers and elders who serve here at Esau Park, I thank God for you tonight, for your commitment to the cause of Christ, for all the time you're taking to come to do. They told me a long time, Bishop Clark, years ago, I went to a conference in the States and they told me it takes a team to make the dream work. So we are grateful for the team here at Eastwood that is making the dream work. Praise God for our pastors and on the district, Center Park, new pastor. I chuckled when he said yesterday. <laughs> we are grateful to God for you and your wife and your congregation as you lead, believing God for great things as he used you for his glory in this upside down crazy world. We give God thanks. We continue to thank God for the other pastors who are coming in. Some of you I don't know, but we are grateful that you're here. And for my good friend, I think Bishop Thompson is the craziest friend I have, and I have to keep him. I don't think if I try to give him away, anybody else will take him on. So I think I just have to keep him. But it's always so good to see you, my friend. God bless you. Welcome to the house of the Lord again. And for those who are joining us via our social media, God bless you. And even this morning, I've been still saying to Sister Clark that, that if I, I'm going to have to get a book just for this week for all the remedies for my throat that I got. What on earth? I'm getting remedies right, left, and center. And I'm grateful for your concern and for the prayers. I, I know I'm not sounding 100%, but I'm sounding a lot better than last night, right? Yes, God is, God is working and we give him praise. We give him honor and we give him glory. But as Jamaican as I am, I am hearing about some things in my throat. I am a, I'm from deep country. And I am hearing some things from my throat I have never heard of in my life. Oh my God. Uh, today I heard about steeping thyme leaves in, 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 in hot water and adding something else and something else. And, and I'm gargling with, what is it, this what now? There is some tablet I dropped in the water. Sister Clark gave it to me last night, disaffirin, disparin, this something. And so I dropped it in the water and I gargled and... But we thank God. We are grateful to God. And thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love, your concern, and your prayers, both in here, in the house, and those of you online. I could almost hear some of you clearing your throat for me. You know how... I could almost hear you sit there going... But I am so grateful to God. God is having his way. And I'm thankful for his touch. I don't take it lightly at all. I'm very, very grateful. I want to thank God for my husband and the Shepherd's House Church of God, who I know is on again. Tonight, I 
thank God for them. I am, I am still a new pastor, sir. I'm a little bit ahead of you, but I think I pastor a wonderful congregation and I'm grateful to God for them, for the privilege of being their pastor. I am here looking around the congregation because I was about to say, Bishop, if my, if my family showed up, then I think I, I, I was gonna win the prize tonight, but I don't see them. Ah! All of you stand up, every one of you stand up. I knew they told me they were coming. Oh my goodness gracious! Please, you all stand up again. Please stand up. All three of you. At the left over the, these are cousins who are like brothers and sisters. Those are my uncles, my late uncle's children. And, and I love them dearly. To the left is Ray and Corey and Michelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think they will get. I think they will grab the others and bring them tomorrow, God willing, as we come to the house of the. No, and I'm just giving trouble, so I don't need a prize. Praise God. But I'm so happy to see them tonight. I was just looking around and didn't see. I am grateful for everyone that is in the house tonight. We continue in our crusade. We continue in our time of divine declaration, brother and sister Sam. It is so good to see you. These are the people, can I tell you something? Let me just stick a pin right here. Well, for those of you who have come in less than 30 years ago, Eastwood Park is special to me, really very, very special. And these are some of the persons that prayed for me, roughed me up, snatched me in, but they watched over us and prayed for us. And, and it is such a blessing, Brother Sam, Sister Sam, to see you in the house of the Lord, still praising God, lifting up the name of the Lord. God bless you. It is good to see you. One of my very, don't tell me I broke the mic already. One of, one of my very, May I borrow yours, sir? Thank you. Praise God. No, same thing. Give me back my <laughs> Praise God. I'm not sure what's happening. There you go. Thank the Lord. One of my very favorite pictures that I have at home sitting on the wall in my home office is a picture of me, and, and don't laugh, and I'm sure Shepherd's House might be chuckling, in my, my black and white choir uniform. Back in the day when all us girls did Christian curls. And I'm sitting right over there between Brother Sam and Brother Muir. So you know that's a little while. And I know Brother Muir is gone on to be with the Lord, but that picture, every time I look at it, it sits on my wall and I remember and I give God praise for all those he positioned in my life to pray over me. And for those of you who are young and know it all, let me help you out. Take advantage of the wisdom of godly seniors. Take advantage of the blessing of godly seniors in your life. Had to take a minute and say that, I'll make it up on the back end. We continue in our time of worship and revival and crusade. As we are declaring, it is time to break free. We have been saying since the crusade started, I know it didn't begin with me, but we have been saying since we are here in this time of celebration that we recognize that there are some things in our lives, some things within the church that it doesn't matter who we know or how brilliant we are, we cannot break them ourselves. We are saying we recognize that we are dealing with an ancient foe who is determined for every human being to live a wretched life and then spend eternity in hell. We are dealing with a foe who does not believe in prisoners of war or granting parole. We have an enemy that is interested 100% in our eternal destruction. And pastor said it tonight, as a result, 
The days are over for cute church. There is nothing cute about sin. There is nothing nice about spiritual lethargy. There is nothing cute about apostasy. The church of the living God must break free from this stupidity of thinking we are smarter than God. We must get rid of this nightmare that we have been trapped in for so long where we think nice programs equal honoring God. That is why I've been saying since Sunday that the theme is not just for the unsaved. The theme is for the church because we have lost our passion and our identity. And so for two weeks, we have been hollering, Councilman Jones, that we recognize that hell not going to turn anything loose. So we are getting ready to get all kind of crazy. We are breaking out of this, you know. And when you're getting ready to break out, it means you are ready for war. You are ready to sweat. You are ready to look all kind of ugly. You are ready to go beyond yourself. You are ready to holler like you have never hollered before. You are getting ready to pray some prayers you did not even know you had in you. You are getting ready to worship at a level that will even frighten you. Preachers must get ready. To preach and only your voice alone you're hearing. Because not everybody, you're not going to have an amen corner when you preach holiness and righteousness. So you must be ready to preach all by yourself. I went out to preach. And when they were taking me home after church, the gentleman driving me, Michelle, said to me, when you come, you're really on assignment, aren't you? I said, what do you mean? He said, because I notice when you're preaching, you don't wait for the applause and you don't pause for the applause. And this is me with my foolish unlearned self. I said, is that how church works? No, no, no. When I come to your church, it means I am an assignment. God gave me a word to deliver. You are not obligated to receive it, but I am obligated to deliver it. So if we are going to see the fullness of God, we have to get over our obsession with Amen Corner and high five and fist bump. And let me, and let me, and let me try to do, fix this nicely because I like to let people know I am not troubling them. I am not troubling how you do your system. But Bishop, when I'm sitting in church and I'm not even 30 minutes in and 15 times you're going to tell me, tap your neighbor, man, take your hand off of me, man. Don't touch me. We're not even 30 minutes in and, and, and already 15 times tap your name and don't speak to me. You are confusing me. I am lost in little words. You know how long I'm waiting to get a chance to come into worship. You know how long I'm waiting to run up and down and help somebody praise the Lord. And while I am there praising, you are going to tell me now to stop praising. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor to praise God. We're not 10 minutes into the message you. And then, Michelle, I am, I am your, your auntie's child. 
and I have some characteristics of my mother where my face betrays me in two and a half seconds flat. Not three, not five. In two and a half seconds, what I am feeling is all over my feet. So after you hit me three times and you're coming in for the fourth time, all you need is one look to know that that is not a good idea right now. You just take one look and my expression says to you, I am all tapped out for the day. Do not tap me one more time. And I love you, but don't tap me. Here is the madness. When we say it is time to break free, it means that we are hanging up our bag of tricks. It means that we are going back to where Holy Ghost run church. And whether man like it or not, we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. We preach that we still believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. If we are going to break free, it means that we stop being worried about being popular. And I haven't even read my text yet. Two weeks, we close tomorrow, God willing, if the rapture tarries. So we must, you said it tonight, we must have a mind made up. That we are coming out of this. We're not waiting on any more olive oil. We're not, we, no, we're not importing any more prophets. No, we're not bring, no, we're not buying any more prophecies. No, we're not paying for any more gymnastics. We are saying that we are breaking out of absolute foolishness because the power of Almighty God still breaks every fetter and still breaks every chain. So when we say the church of the living God is breaking free, are saying we're not waiting for permission from the enemy to be who God wants us to be for those of you who are not yet saved I ask God to provoke a fight in you tonight where you just get fed up of your life going in circle you just get fed up of being a hamster in a cage you just get tired of doing the same stuff over and over and over again and you're not getting any further in life. It's time to break free. The book of 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 6, reading from verse 24. Second, there you go. And it came to pass after this. Could you stand please? That Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Let me stick up in here. Bishop Thompson, when one invading army, and you know, lays siege, not invade, you know, but lays siege against another nation, they're not interested in swords and bow and arrows, you know. They are strategic in what they are doing. They are like, we are bringing enough stuff. Mr. Army man, we are bringing enough for us to camp out here for six months. We are cutting off every access into your city. And sooner or later, we don't have to shoot one arrow. You are going to wave a white flag because the point of the siege has worked. 
The idea of a siege is to suffocate the life out of the city that is being besieged until you just surrender. Brethren, you all don't seem to realize you. It's a long time hell laying siege against the church. You know. It's a long time Goliath. Lord Jesus, can you tell him? How his foot. Bishop, you remember Goliath? You know what the scripture said? That Goliath for 40 days. And I know I'm sounding and behaving like I didn't go to Bethel, but can I just flow where my heart is going tonight? Hear the thing? For 40 days, he laid siege against Israel. And hear what the Bible, of all the other property that Goliath could stand on, he had his foot on the neck of the land that belonged to Judah. What does Judah mean? Reverend Brown, of all the place that Goliath could have stood, he put his foot on the neck of the praise. Why you think the praise team and the music ministry is one of the most troublesome places? The one, the place that get the most fight in any church because the enemy knows the power of praise and worship and we are sitting down Substituting cute singing for anointed warfare, not realizing that we are behaving that way because we are under siege. The king of Assyria was passing by upon the wall. This is how bad things were. And there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my Lord. Oh, King. Where is 28? And the king said unto her, What is your problem? Why are you hollering like that? And she said, My friend and I made a deal. Things are so tough, we decide to cook and eat our own children. And she said, When it was my turn, we did it. I know it is her turn and she has hidden her child Lord God so we boiled my son this is the condition of the world in which the church exists so when we come in and play games my God this kind of stronghold will never break this not only in Bible this is the age in which we live And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. And he passed by upon the wall and the people looked. And behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. And as usual, we get the blame. Then he said, God, do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. In other words, this prophet in here that speak for these things, they're not concerned that they did not repent you. No, 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 no. Don't tell me to change my way. What more do you want him to do? No, you got the word of God. But you're not looking at your own fault. It is Elijah cause. So therefore I'm going to kill him. But Elisha sat. In the house. And the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. But even before the messenger came to him. He said to the elders. See ye. How this son of a murderer. Hath sent to take away mine head. Look when the messenger cometh. Shut the door. And hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet just behind him? Let us jump over to chapter 7. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour. And listen, 
We better believe for the impossibilities. Tomorrow at this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And when we have brought free pastor and God is bringing revival, expect those who sit in high seats to be the ones to bring the criticism, wondering if this can really happen. This is not somebody in the street, but it is the Lord on whose arm that Elisha was leaning. Hear what he answered and said, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, that is why pastors need to be careful who will come alongside you as your armor bearer. Let me just leave that there and keep it moving. He said, if the Lord can it be, and he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Verse number three, and there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another. It's a mind thing. They said one to another. Why are we going to sit on here until we die? And listen to the reading, the reasoning of men under a death sentence. He said, look, if we enter into the city, everybody in there starving too. And we shall die there. And if we sit here, we are going to die. But I can't speak for the camp of the Syrians. I am not sure what might happen over there. But we know they have food. So since we have dead anyway, we will as well just die with a full belly. So let us go on over to the camp of the Syrians and listen to their reasoning. And they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of, this, of Syria, behold, there was nobody in sight. Lord God in heaven, for the Lord God in heaven had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Behold, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, verse number seven, last verse, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And is four leprous men tiptoeing out the gate. This is the word of God for the people of God. God's words are blessed and settled in heaven. The prayer has already been prayed tonight over this word. And we believe God. Let the people of God say amen. amen. I want to, you may be seated in his presence. I want to speak with you tonight. I want to speak with you tonight about limitless expectations. Limitless expectations about giving birth to impossibilities about believing without seeing David in Psalm 5 he said early in the morning my voice you will hear he said God my voice will ascend unto you but he didn't stop there he said I will look up in other words I'm praying not out of duty I am expecting heaven to hear, yes sir, I am expecting heaven to hear and not only hear, I am expecting some activity in the realm of the heavens. So while I am praying, I am looking up expecting that that which I'm asking for is going to be manifested. I'm so grateful for this AV team. Hear me well. The one thing I believe everyone is very aware of since this crusade began is the undeniable truth that man without God is bound hopelessly bound by the forces of darkness with a taskmaster who will not rest until I said earlier every human being is eternally destroyed we are also made aware of the fact 
that it is possible to have embraced the freedom that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Walk to an altar and, and get baptized, but it did not go beyond our intellect. Our natures were not altered by the nature of God. So by the time the crusade is over, we are not sure if we want God anymore. Here, Bishop reminding that come Sunday morning we we in crusade still. And come Sunday night we in crusade still. Mm -hmm. Revival is not a one shot thing. It's a way of life. When we come to these gatherings and we wrap up come Sunday, the Pentecostal fire of revival must still be present in choir practice and, and, and ushers meeting and in the kitchen and in us wherever you are, the presence and the passion of God must be the overriding and the controlling presence. We are, however, also very aware through the preaching of the gospel and the witness of the spirit that God has no interest in having us living halfway lives. That is why we have called a halt these two weeks and we are saying enough is enough. When we are completely given to the idea that it is time to break free yeah. and, 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 and pastor was all up in my introduction tonight. When we are saying it is not a cute cliche. So tired of cuteness in church. When I had two inches more here and could actually see be, be a, a young lady in church told me, she said, don't preach so hard. You're sweating out your perm. <laughs> that time I had about three inches of here, you know. And you, all you're concerned about is me sweating. Seriously? No, no, no. It is not a cute cliche so when people are locked in warfare and you see them come in worshiping fighting for their children speak jesus over family speak jesus over darkness my god when crusade finished god help you if you can't sing the song the same way because after crusade there is still darkness after crusade there is still family so we must come in and shout it from the mountain we must come in and declare your name is healing your name is power your name is still life so when we say that we are breaking free, it is not a cute cliche, but we are registering our intent. Pastor Santa Hill, we are registering our intention over Santa Hill that we are rewriting the storyline. When we say we are breaking free, we are saying we are breaking the silence over Sandy Park. We are breaking the silence over Gregory Park. We are breaking the silence in the name of Jesus that every corner of this island will know that there is a God in Israel. It's not a cute thing. We are saying that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are suddenly and ferociously shattering every obstacle from hell. We are saying without apology, we are coming in like bulldozers. And when we are finished, every high thing must come down. We are not resting. When we say we are breaking free, we are saying I'm going to dig my way out of this jail cell. If it kills me, I don't care what it takes. We are saying, God, there are too many things obscuring my view. There are too many voices in my ears. There are too many false prophets lying to me. I'm saying, God, I'm tired of this tour bought textbook, watered down, useless, insipid, that have no, can't help anybody. We're tired. We're, I was talking with Brother Sheldon coming down this evening, and, and, and I know sometimes because islands are small, when something bad happens, like in, in the US or Canada, it seemed like, oh my God, what a terrible place. 
But no, no, the com comparison. But when you're going to sit down and a six year old is going to school with a gun to go shoot up the classroom and we sit there going how many persons going to the tea party oh come on and get your praise on and, and, and people are burning down places my god four year olds are being raped and slaughtered and the church is sitting down then how many persons are going to this poor day we having money and petty and you get your eyebrows done the devil is a liar and the church is sitting down under this nonsense while people are dropping dead all around us but we are checking off list and I know about self-care especially since COVID we know about self-care sir but suddenly that is the theme now oh my god we just go to church one sunday for the month you know self-care is important and we have to but you're gone to every work event and you're gone on vacation and when your child playing ball you're out there hollering and when cricket team going on you're out there anything else we are there but when it comes on to breaking free so that somebody else can be free we are there talking about well you know i can't do so much we have to remember self-care and we go through this when we say we are breaking free it is a statement that informs the realm of hell that you have no plans to sign a release for me you have no plan to give me early parole but i have no plan to die in this gutter of sin the bible tells me that my price was paid and i'm not waiting on you to give me permission i am busting out like a bandit and stop me catch me if you can that is where we are and as we said last night if we make the declaration then there must be some active movement to indicate that we are up to something just like Samaria this world is under siege it's under siege from carnal men corrupt governments individuals who talk a lot without saying anything the world is under siege by individuals who are supposedly influential but the only thing they can influence you to do is to live life so degrading the most popular ones are those who can is the one who can be most risque the stars that get the most applause are the ones who will have on the least clothes are the ones whose lyrics can be the nastiest are the ones who can do the stupidest things and this is what is being held up as the role model for our children and that is why when we walk into church let me just get on my soapbox and you are taking from the world coming in here putting church clothes on things that come out of the gutter and lifting up songs that have nothing to do with God changing the lyrics and what is the same rhythm and so people are coming in and can't tell whether they are in church or in the club the devil is a liar the church is under siege and i don't care if we have to play cds pastors must get radical and rise up and declare it is not happening not on my watch <laughs> I pray for Beyonce and Kanye that they get saved. I pray for what the other people are. You know the names, so tell me. Rihanna and all of them little people. We pray that they get saved. But I am not so caught up with you that my prayer is going to propel me 
to take your devil infused song and come in here and give it to God and call it worship and talk nonsense about we must be relevant if we want to get the young people you must be joking this is what they listen to in the club and it never saved them never helped them why do you think they are running to the church they do not want in church what they left in the club if club could help them they would not come in here so when we are grabbing from the world and bringing it all in here and carrying on the devil is a liar the world is under siege and the church is under siege so if hell feel if he camp out long enough and squeeze us long enough then the church is going to cave and then we are not going to allow the world to set the values for the conduct of the church can I tell you something it will never happen and anywhere it is allowed to come in my God in heaven there is a search party the bloodhounds of heaven are barking through the church and anywhere it is hiding we plead the blood of Jesus Christ there will be no compromising the righteousness of God if you are saved you are saved put put the place under siege and it's trouble tonight, you know. Bishop Jones, see me call you Bishop Jones, Councilman Jones. You know why we settle for some of the things we settle for? Because we are under siege. That is why we're boiling our children and eating them. That is why we are going through the stupid things we are going through. That is why we are hallucinating miracles. That is why false prophets can fool us. Because we are under siege. Goliath have his big foot on the neck of the prayers. But we nonetheless singing songs. And because it feel good and we can jig. We are thinking we are getting a breakthrough. But Samaria was under siege. Nobody going out. Nobody coming in. After a while my God everything in the city was chaos and confusion. And it got so bad in the city. Uh, two women my God agreed to eat their children and I know when we read things like this it sounds horrid look at the age in which we live look at the time in which we live one of these crazy states thank you I don't even remember which of them is now pushing to get a law passed for the age of consent to be married is 10 We are a 10 year old can decide to marry a perverted 40 year old because something wrong with you if you're 40 and decide to find a 10 year old sexually attractive something is wrong with you you need Jesus you need to be delivered and their states supposedly intelligent lawmakers sitting down to make it legal and we call ourselves a free country my God in heaven we are under siege and when you bring it home into the church Lord help me tonight our churches are becoming the hideout for pedophiles and rapists and molesters our church is becoming a haven for adulterers and fornicators because there is no spirit of discerning holy ghost not revealing anything anymore and persons can live any old how come to church take communion have a good old time and go home and nothing changed and we are here clapping our hands but oh god there is a king on a wall with sackcloth look at what the scripture said the king on the wall you know and the Bible said when the people looked up Reverend Brown they were able to see under his kingly robes and they realized he had sackcloth 
on against his flesh because he realized only God can fix this thing. So apostles and bishops, doctors and lawyers, professors and pundits, whatever title the church of God has given us, we need some sackcloth under our fancy suit because the church is under siege and our nice sermons can't fix it. And so these two weeks, we have some persons who are saying we're putting on. He had sackcloth within upon his flesh. And when, he, when the woman hollered and all of that, he, he said, look here, man, we're killing the prophet. No, leave us alone. Our job is to preach Jesus and tell you that unless you repent, you're going to hell. Our job is to tell you and ask you what more do you want him to do. Our job is to tell you Jesus died so you can live. Our job is to tell you that you don't have to die in this condition. And when the wrath of God falls on you, do not blame the church. The king said, God do so and more also. If I do not kill Elisha today. And the Bible said Elisha sat in the house. And the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. But as he was coming, Elisha said, You see how this son of a murderer is coming now to kill me because I spoke the truth of God. He said when he get to the door, lock it and hold it. Because it's not only him coming. His master is right behind him. And chances are he have some more people with him. He said, but no, when God is bringing deliverance. No, you're not nobody in here dying. You're not killing any prophet. You're not killing any preacher. Almighty God is raising up a generation. Who will yet declare the righteousness of God. And you will not die, but you shall live. I release Holy Ghost anointing over you. Anywhere your church is, I draw blood of all around you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare fire, not only in your belly, but in your pulpit, anywhere your church sits. We release the fire of God. He said, this evil is of thee. And then in chapter 7, Elisha said, in the midst of this siege, I have a word from the Lord. No, this is not going to continue. There's a sound in the atmosphere of an abundance of rain there is a breaking of strongholds ah there is a breaking of fetters there is a revival in the land there is a wind of god that is blowing through the atmosphere there is a hollering and there is a heaving as the glory of god is moving through the earth God will not let hell win Eastwood God will not let hell win Lord I don't care Bishop Clark how many persons get vexed and leave Eastwood no, no, God is still God and there will be revival in this house. I don't care how many get vexed and stop giving. The bills will be paid. Missions will happen. Sandy Park, I don't care what you have inherited. I don't care how many demons around you. As long as God is God in that house, there will be revival. Sandy Park will be revived. Oh my God, Santa Hill. We're not tiptoeing and half stepping. See, Bishop, should preach at the assembly, my church. On a second Wednesday, we are fasting. And I promise you, you're not finding more than six in there, you know. 
But we go in, Bishop. You must be joking. We are fasting like nobody's business. You mad? We preach and we sing and we pray and we lay hands and we believe God. And if I go in there one day and it's three, guess what? We're going to fast and pray and believe God to send revival. No, the church is under siege. God, we cute. What we are declaring tonight that it's time to break free and we are walking out of the bondage into the restoration that comes from the power and the presence of Almighty God to restore is to bring something or someone back to its original position or usefulness to restore is to bring you back to where you were before hell deceive you and the Bible said Elisha said hear the word of the Lord tomorrow about this time can we go on to verse number two and can I say it one more time be careful who is your armor bearer you don't need three people beside you with earpiece talking in the sleeve you really don't need anybody carrying your cloth to dry your face we don't need all of that I don't think it happens here and don't let it happen here no you need to be careful who stands next to you as your advisor this was not somebody in the back pew you know look at the thing the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God the man of God is giving the king a word of life and the person closest to the king listen to the sarcasm if the Lord make windows in heaven can this even happen it's like man of God you don't realize the destruction and the devastation don't you realize things so bad people eating their children which God is this that is going to make this happen and when you know that you heard from God you don't bat an eye you know Elisha did not argue you know Elisha turned around and he said behold you are gonna see it with your eyes but you will never eat thereof I don't care what has been decreed over Jamaica over East Park over any church by the forces of darkness I am declaring by the authority of the sovereign God that the church has broken free and we are going into revival and restoration in the name of Jesus every captive in sin is coming out and those who are gonna tell you don't dream that big don't fight with them you know if God says so don't back down if God says so preach or if it's only you alone if God says so hold fast to what God has said it must come to pass but here is the thing so we can go home it's I've never liked church clocks and I will never like church clocks but I want you to go home read on there for me hear what don't take the clock down let it stay right there there's a thin line between faith and foolishness yes yes so unless the Holy Ghost hijacked the house I want you to go home at a safe and decent hour still don't like church clocks but hey hear what the scripture said and there were four leprous men I love these fellows you know. if you are going to break free you must have a made up mind it matters what you believe Reverend Brown because whatever you believe will determine the course of your life to believe is to accept as true whatever you accept as true will determine how you conduct yourself the four leprous men sat down outside and listened to the conversation say hey look at all of us 
Why are we going to sit here until we die? If you are not saved, what are you waiting on? How much more sinning you need to do to be convinced that it is not good for you? How many more nights must you spend with the frogs? How much longer are you going to stay in a pig pen? Knowing that you are meant to be a worshiper. How many more nights you're going to drown your sorrows with Jerry and his nephew. And you wake up in the morning and Mr. Heineken is your breakfast. And by noon you still want to kill yourself. When there is a deliverer named Jesus who has already paid the price for sin. Paid the price for you to be delivered. How much more sinning do you need to do? Before you realize sin will kill you. They said, why are we going to sit here? Thank you, please. Listen to the reasoning. He said, if we enter into the city, everybody in there is starving. And this is where I get in trouble. You know. I don't care how churches are struggling. It is not every congregation or every prophet or apostle who comes, you are to align yourself to. Because chances are where they're coming from. Not only dying, they already have a funeral, we can night night. You have not filled your pool in 10 years, but you coming over here to tell me, what kind of water to put in my pool? And who is the baptist? The devil is a liar. No, he said, if we go in there, and my God, some of us are aligning ourselves with things just as dead as we are. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Sheldon, when you back up to Chronicles, do you remember how Uzziah got himself all arrogant and God struck him with leprosy? Pastor, look at the trouble. The minute the man became leprous, he lost the ability and the right to be the face of Judah ever again. Stay with me here. He could never lead Judah into battle again. He could never sit on the throne to do anything again. He could never preside over Congress because he was a leper. But here is the thing. As leprous and rejected as he was, Uzziah, based on his reputation, still ran the country. The man had lost his usefulness, but nonetheless was the one calling the shots. And the people knew that he was rejected never to come back. And instead of behaving like they have said, they have kept on following a leprous man waiting to die. But then in Isaiah chapter 6. One day, pastor, word came. Because as long as Uzziah was alive, as leprous as his, he was, his name still carried weight. But Isaiah chapter 6 said, in the year... When King Uzziah, when the obstacle was removed, Isaiah said, it's like I was going to church for the first time. He said, I saw the Lord. I saw him high and lifted up and his glory filled the temple. He said, Mike, he said, he said I cried out, woe is me for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips and here the other part, everybody just like me. He said, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell among the people. Let me, let me get in trouble and say this. Some of you, if you're going to stay free and be the force God wants you to be, you have to sever yourself from some connections that you have. Look at what the, the man said. He said, if we go in this city, everybody there is dying. And if we sit here, we are going to die. When you decide... To break free, 
you have a mindset of limitless expectations you are literally believing for the impossible you are literally saying i don't know what it look like i don't know what color it's going to be i don't know what it smell like i don't know who is bringing it but if god says so then it is so and i refuse to sit in this mediocre pathetic state while there is a great depth in god waiting for me to get there we must limitless expectations and so the scripture said hear what they said they said we can't go in there and we can't sit here but let us take our chances we must be ready to take risks thank you for a god who will never let us fall he said let us go to the camp of the syrians he said well if they save us alive we, we shall live just in case they look at us and realize we are lepers and maybe be too afraid to come close to kill us however they reasoned that by the stretch of any imagination they could go into the camp of the enemy not only are they enemies but they are leprous enemies and you're really thinking that the possibility exists that they might not die he said if they save us we live and if they kill us well the only thing that's gonna happen we just die can you give me that other verse when we decide to break free we are breaking free into out of the bondage into the restoration of god i don't know what hell took from you hear me tonight for every unsaved person anything hell took from you I give you my word tonight, but not even my word, it is his word. Everything that the locust took, when you give your life to the Lord, everything you think you have lost, Almighty God will put it back and double on top of that. It does not matter how long you have been in the valley, it does not matter how bruised you feel, anything you think you have lost, it is never too late. everything thank you please he said your tree has been stripped down there is nothing left he said but I am gonna give it back to you I'm going to accelerate time I'm gonna speed up things I am gonna go against nature so that what I intend for you can come to manifestation this is the God we serve this is the God we serve and hear what he said hear what they said the Bible said, after we are revived and restored, there is this thing called restitution. I jumped ahead of myself. They rose up in the twilight to go onto the camp of the Syrians. Listen, man, if you're going to break free, you have to take a faith walk. You must be willing to take a leap of faith. You must be willing to believe without seeing. You go to the doctor and don't go, Pastor, I don't have faith. Yes, you do. And unless you are a doctor, you can read doctor's handwriting. But they scribble something, you know, on a piece of paper. And guess what you do? You go to your nearest pharmacy. You can read a thing on the paper, you know. And you hand it to the pharmacist and they tell you pick it up and with all the scribbles you can read guess what you can read the instructions on how to take it and you take your little bottle and it says take two tablets with food by 10 o'clock in the morning you have no clue what is in there you don't know what make it but did you trust the person in the lab coat and you believe that if they give it to you and you take it so guess what you do you take the whole thing and doctors not gonna like me very much because I had to learn the hard way that even when you feel better you finish all the antibiotics because when they give me the five-day course and I feel better in three days but praise Jesus the other 
until you have to go back I'm like oh so you take the you have faith faith is trusting the strength of somebody else if we are going to break free and walk and live in the revival if like Samson we are going to come out from under there must be a willingness for a step of faith the Bible said the four leprous men Reverend Thompson we cannot let leprous dying men have more faith than us the Bible said they rose up in the twilight they scared you know they didn't go in broad daylight and they headed to the camp of the Syrians no we're wrapping this thing up but I love this rest restitution get ready to get back son I don't care what your time in sin took from you I don't care if hell is even still laying siege against your life all it calls for is a step of faith here is the thing let me tell you what I love about this thing God did not heal the leprosy you know and so they went out there running and making noise with bullhorn when four men have lep leprosy to the place where they think they're gonna die they are in a sad thank you physical condition there is no great strength in these men and the four of them rev walking towards enemy camp and listen to what this scripture said when they got to enemy camp hold it right there for me when they got to enemy camp nobody at the gate no watchman at the gate and, and, and they peep through the thing and realize nobody behind the gate and can you imagine you see anybody no but something wrong man because we are the watchmen and they push gate open and nobody stand up with bayonet and they walk in a little bit and, and, and nobody and they're like and they went to the autumnus part of the camp and there was nobody to be found in this army that is besieging the entire city councilman jones do you know the kind of god you serve lord god in heaven is four half dead leprous men without tambourine or fanfare but almighty God was ready to make sure that their jailbreak was successful almighty God was where I had to make sure there were no obstacles listen to what the Bible said that the Lord had made the host of the Syrians Michelle heard four leprous men and almighty God magnified their footsteps that well trained army they hear horses and chariots coming after them and you know you have broken free when your enemies begin to testify look at what the something said so the enemy you are afraid of tonight is already running 10 miles down the road you hear worrying about enemy almighty god already light their barley field every demon and devil every stronghold is broken every lying spirit is gone in the name of jesus christ everything that is supposed to kill you the Bible said four lepros tipping but God magnified the thing 
and listen to the testimony of the enemy. You think hell don't know that you have backup? You think hell don't know that the church is underguarded? Why are we laying down and dying? You think hell don't know, my brother, that, that the church is full of Holy Ghost power? That the entire arsenal of heaven is residing in the church of the living God? So if you are born again, there is a fire in your belly. There is one more praise and one more worship left in your belly hear what he said listen to he said they have hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us and so they took off they ran tonight in the name of Jesus they arose in the twilight and left their tents their horses everything my God anybody remember and if the Lord help us be going there tomorrow when Israel was coming out of Egypt Almighty God took one day to bankrupt Egypt he said to the ex-slaves go to your captors And what? Let me tell you something. You are break. You have broken free, and you are not coming out empty-handed. Almighty God has already gone ahead of you. I speak joy. I speak peace. I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak restoration, revival, renewal in the name of Jesus Christ. I pull you out from under. I release a fire in your belly in the name of Jesus. If God can magnify the feet of four lepers, for trained warriors to think armies are coming what will God not do in response to your praise tonight what will God not do in response to your authentic worship what will God not do in response to your faithfulness could you stand in this house tonight know that we have and I'm changing the order Reverend Brown we're not breaking free know that we have Know that there has been an unceremonious crash in the camp of the enemy. Know that every obstacle has been removed. We are now saying to God, we thank you for revival. Bishop Thompson over Gregory Park, I don't care how many devils have laid siege. And people have this ridiculous behavior that if things don't go their way, do you know how many pastors are an ally to those laying siege because we are worried about members' attitude? There is not one church member alive with enough money and enough oomph to shut down God's church. You must be joking. Sit down if you want to. We will worship around you. No, I said it and I say it again. Nothing provokes me like bad attitude in Christians. You provoke me to no end. Because all we are doing is hindering what God wants to do. But I don't care who has laid siege. And you believe that God is going to revive over your family. I don't care what is broken and you believe that God can put it back together let nobody tell you otherwise the Lord said to the king if heaven is opened you don't have to believe what I believe just don't try to block what God is doing God has already gone ahead you are yet afraid but the enemy is already scattered because we have broken free 
So we are walking back into our worship. We are walking into our passion. We are walking into praise. We are walking into victory. We are walking in divine authority. We are walking in the blood of Jesus. We are walking in Holy Ghost power. We are rescuing our children. We are rescuing our schools. We are covering our churches because we have broken free. And the church of the living God is again the church. We break every limit off of your expectations. Tonight, if you're in this house, I've said this in so many places, you may have heard me say so. Reverend Brown, I preached at the church and the earlier in the day was a home going for a 17 year old that died gang violence. There were young people everywhere and some of them stayed back for the service. And that night we were preaching about the coming of the Lord and the urgency of the hour for people to repent. And while I was working the altar, a young man, tears coming down his face. He looked at me and he said, I heard every word you said and I believe you, but I cannot afford to get saved. He continued, Bishop. He said, if I die tonight and go to hell, it is not your fault. You know what his trouble was? This is the stronghold of the gang he was in. He was just afraid that if word got out, he has laid down arms, he may as well be dead. And he stood there with a great conviction and wept. I will never forget that young man. And he wept. He said, if I die and go to hell, I am releasing you from responsibility. Tonight, I don't know who or what has laid siege against your life. Tonight, God has broken that stronghold. And if you came in this house, if you came in this house and you are not yet saved, there is no devil in hell that can cancel what God has done for you. Is there anybody that walked in? It's already late and you do not know the Lord. This is your time to move. We would love to pray for you wherever you are in this house. If you do not know Jesus, we would love to pray for you. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Church, I told you last night, don't make me get crazy. God bless you. Come, precious. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Yes, come. Every fetter, every stronghold, unlimited expectations is there anybody else in this house who does not know the lord this is your time to move to this altar i don't know what hell took from you god bless you come my dear come 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 god bless you the lord bless you is there anybody else the lord bless you praise almighty god unlimited expectations anybody that does not know the Lord. Tonight there is a breaking taking place. Tonight your enemy is hearing the hoofs of hundreds of horses. As almighty God clear the path for you. Come my dear, come, come, come to Jesus, come. Come on altar workers, move fast, come. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? God magnified, let me say it again, the footsteps of four half dead lepers and sent a trained army running for their life. And tonight God has released the very fires of heaven and every obstacle in your way is now submitted and subjected to the power of almighty God. There is nothing that can stop you getting saved tonight anybody else in this house you do not know the lord let me talk to the church let me talk to the church a little bit brethren i am not sure how you do it here at eastwood let me explain god we're living in funny times in the states depending on where i am i have to explain to people that in church we lay hands so we are not accused of anything crazy place but right here at in this church we like to lay hands 
We are not trying to invade your space. If you are not comfortable, tell us and we'll back off. But I like when altar workers hold on to persons who come so they know they're not standing alone. So put your hand on our shoulder and while I am talking prayer, while I am talking war, while I am talking become the hoofs of victory, while I am talking... Hear me, the rest of you in this house. Every spirit of pretense that will cause any believer to leave this house and be a victim for hell to seduce, we shut it down now in Jesus' name. Because when we are going through, Reverend Brown, the church is not exempt from trouble. So Christians have married problem too. Christian get sick too. Christian have money problem. Christian have all kind of problems too. And the devil is telling you that when you believe in tomorrow morning for victory, it is not going to happen. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, on your behalf there is a pounding of hoofs in the camp of the enemy as God God bless you God bless you the Lord bless you there is a pounding of hoofs so right over this side if there's a believer tonight on this night before we close that needs a delivering touch from God you're not going home to boil your child you're not going home to fall into depression. There is a delivering anointing in this house tonight. And this is your time to move. I'm now talking to the church. If you need, you come right over on this side. Because there is a delivering anointing in this house. Every life from hell, there is a thundering of hoofs. Come, 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 come. In the name of Jesus, we have room. Come, come. Come on, we have room. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, on this last night before we close, we are believing God limitless expectations. I don't care how long the siege was. I don't care how long the drought was. Tonight I break open your spirit to believe God for the impossible. Believe God. Bishop Thompson, can I provoke you? Can you come here please? This young man standing right here. I've been looking at him from a preaching. This one right here. This young man right here. Right here in this blue and white shirt with his hands outstretched. I want you to pray, grab onto him and pray for this young man for me. Son, I don't care what the enemy told you. There is a thundering of hoofs tonight in the camp of the enemy on your behalf. You are free, you are restored, you are delivered and everything you lost, God just gave it back. And here is the rest of the story Reverend Brown you hear we've been saying that we are being broken free so we can go free people the Bible said after they check out the camp and realize that nobody not there they eat and fold their belly then they begin to take things and go hide it then listen to the leper they're gonna give it to yes man listen to them he said we do not well this day Give me that other verse, please. Listen to the lepers. After this verse, they went and they hid it. Ah. Then said they, this is, the, this is the nature of revival. You get free so you can go tell somebody else how they can be freed. The Bible said, they said one to another, we do not well at all. He said, this day, is a day of good tidings and if we hold our peace if we even wait until morning some mischief will come upon us so know that you are delivered hear the hoofs of the horses as almighty god give you complete freedom so that you can turn around and go tell somebody else he did it for me and he will do it for you that is what this is about unlimited 
limitless expectations. And so as these on this altar are being ministered to go ahead music ministry. Because you being... of your love, I'm free. prayer you know. but this, this is Thursday before Friday two weeks son um, listen no 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 on the drums I'm gonna come to you in a minute and God knows I'm not doing this to tickle anybody's emotions but this is the best way I can think of to explain to you what God did in that text is four leprous men I am wearing shoes don't play a thing don't play a thing you get ready Mr. Drummer Rev, can you hear me? Praise no, can you hear my phone? No, no, no. no, you know. Is a leprosy, you know, Rev, no. approaching enemy camp? This is what we're hearing, you know. Hit those drums for me. Hit it. Mm -hmm. It's a leprosy, you know, and that is what the enemy heard. It's me just walking with my sick self, you know, and that is what enemy heard. They heard loud noise. They heard horses' hoofs. Hit me something hard. They heard horses' hoofs. They heard a noise of battle. They heard warriors coming after them. And all it was were four. Come up. I'm going to ask you to pray. Come. All they heard were is four. And that is what they heard warriors coming thank you son thank you hold on Daniel hold on there so if God could do that then what do you think the enemy is going to hear when you lift your voice tonight and give God praise what do you think if God magnified the footsteps of four lepers what do you think God is going to do and get ready to help us what do you think God is going to do when he hears an army of worshipers who are free lifting up their voices and giving him praise in this house tonight go ahead what do you think open your mouth yes yes Yes, God! Yes, God! Yes, God! Lord, 
let the Holy Ghost fall. Let the Holy Ghost fall in this house tonight. Hold on. We're not staying all night. We're not staying all night. But every person in this house, give God. We have gotten accustomed to laying hands. And I like to lay hands. But every now and again, we have to make a decision. An executive decision over our own lives. Every now and again, I have to say, yes, I am grateful for your hand. But tonight, I need to make a move just for myself. Open your spirit in this house. Give your God something to work with. The lepers first had to move out of your spirit. And Almighty God magnified and gave the people victory. I don't care what the enemy, how he had you surrounded. Tonight as you lift your voice, even those of you who are coming in tonight getting saved, you are free. You are free. Hell can't hold you anymore. You are free. Every chain is broken. The power of the blood. And as we get ready to pray, Bishop Thompson, please come. Get ready to pray this closing prayer over this altar tonight. Is there one more leper in this house tonight that will declare, I will not sit here and die. My footsteps may not be much, but I'm giving it to God tonight. And I'm believing for my victory. Lift up your voice one more time. 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 In this house tonight. Lift up your voice one more time. everybody just lift up your hands in the house everybody lift up your hands in the house right now and just worship almighty god come on try lift up your hands open your mouths please and magnify come on open your mouths please it's deliverance time come on open your mouths and magnify god something is breaking loose right now lift up your hands and open your mouths and worship god come on church open the mouths and worship God the bondage is broken the fetters are falling tonight in the name of Jesus every spirit of witchcraft is broken tonight every spirit of back magic is broken tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, we break every bondage tonight. We break every fetter tonight. We break every chain tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we command every prison doors to be open. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, church. 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we declare liberty tonight we declare freedom tonight we declare access tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in Jesus name Father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if, if thou withdraw thyself from us where shall we go we give you praise tonight we give you glory and we give you honor we thank you for your word we thank you for the message and we thank you for the messenger Lord in the name of Jesus as the people stand tonight lift up in all the hands right now I pray Jehovah God that thou would break the shackles in Jesus name and set them free almighty God let your people worship you in the name of Jesus we come against every spirit of Sambayat and Tobiah we come against every Goliath spirit in Jesus name we pray for freedom in the name of Jesus we pray for access to worship your almighty God in the name of Jesus father in the name of Jesus we release worship in the house we release deliverance in the house we release praise in the house tonight set the captive free Jesus in the name of Jesus break every chain break every prison bar oh God and my master we call Lazarus to come forth in the name of Jesus spirit of the living God release your anointing right now upon this crowd in the name of Jesus we declare it in the atmosphere right now and we lose these spirits in Jesus name that have been bound by tradition and family and curse in the name of Jesus we declare it right now in Jesus name name of Jesus I want to do something before I turn back over to Bishop Porter just lift your hands everybody right now please lift up everybody please stand right now we're gonna ask to shout seven shouts of hallelujah this is what tear down Jericho walls and tonight every walls in your life will come down in Jesus name I, I, I don't want to play cute or play nice this is the night of deliverance in the name of Jesus the doors of access is about to be opened by you opening your mouth tonight in the name of Jesus you're gonna take back your praise you're gonna take back your testimony Akaba Soko. you're gonna take back your hallelujahs can I talk this up you're gonna take back your families in the name of Jesus the devil is a liar Tonight is deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Kata Sukuriasa. Lift up your hands, everybody, right now. Lift up your hands, everybody, right now. Lift up your hands. We're going to shout hallelujah seven times. And every Jericho wall shall come down. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Are you ready, church? Are you ready for your miracle? Are you ready for the breakthrough? Are you ready for deliverance? Tonight is your night. One, hallelujah. Two, three, four, five, six. Shout seven! Shout it out! Lift up your voice! Lift up your voice! Lift up your voice! 
Lift up your voice. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah! 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 Makoto soko yasa. Maya mama kosoko yabasata. Shaya mama makoseke yababaha. Shaya mama makosoko ya. Rata saka basoko ya. Rama mama basake yababa soto sa. Shaya mama 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 mama. Shaya mama mama. Shaya mama makasa. Hey 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 hey. Hey hey hey. the Son of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Break out. Break free. Oh, hallelujah. And receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Remember, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty, hallelujah, glory. Oh, God Almighty, hallelujah, mm. hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You on this side, you break free already. Hallelujah. You get the deliverance already. Hallelujah. And you're going to let everybody know that deliverance is in the house. That's what you're going to know. You're going to let everybody know that deliverance is in the house. And you, Deliverance has come. Hallelujah. Why stand we here and perish? Move out. Move out. Move out. Move out. Because God is sending deliverance. Why? My God, the lepers, they we're exercising faith. Why stand we here and die? Let us make a move and preadventure. God might do something. Yes, it's your night. Move out because God is about to do it for you. He's going to send a noise that the enemy will believe that they are being overrun. That's what God is doing for you right now. It's your deliverance time. It's your deliverance time now, you know. This is your time. And I don't know what you're in. I don't care. It's your deliverance time. God says, He's going to break through for you. Plenty is going to come. Deliverance is going to come. Blessing is going to come. Breakthrough is going to come. This is your time. God Almighty. Oh, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Don't leave tonight. It's your time. Could I ask that all of you, all of you, who decide that you're going to give God a chance tonight. Just come up here for me. Leave from there and come up here. Leave from there and come up here. Come on, come on, come on. Glory to God, God. Hallelujah! Come on, God is speaking to you. God bless you. Come on, come on.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is your night, this is your night, this is your night. This is your night. Come on, don't stop there. God talking to you, so move out. Hallelujah. Why stay here and die? Why do you stay there and die? Move. Why are you going to stay there and die? Because if you don't move, you're going to be in trouble. Move. Move for God tonight. Don't worry about it. The lepers were wondering what is going to happen, but God will take care of it. Come, come. Come, God will take care. Miss, why stand there and perish? Huh? Why you stay there and perish? Come. Come. Why stand ye? Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. God will take care of it. Am I saying that God is going to let everything be rose? No, I'm just saying that whatever it is, God will see you through. Hallelujah. He'll work it out for you to his honor and to his glory. Somebody else come before we move now. Somebody else come. Somebody else come. Somebody else come now. Somebody else come. It's time. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody else come now. Walk up, walk up, walk up for God, walk up for God. Hallelujah. Why stand you there and perish? Bless God. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, believer. Shout with her. As you, hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty. Come, dear. Come, come, come. Come, make your decision for God and come. Why stay and perish? Why stay and perish? Why stay and perish? Why stay and perish? Make up your mind for God. Don't make sense to stay there and perish. Give God a chance. Just pray adventure. God might just change things around. Hallelujah. Will you come? Will you make the decision for Christ? Will you make the decision for Christ? Will you make the decision for Christ? Will you make the decision for Jesus Christ? Come, yes. A God we are say tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're covering them right now. We're not leaving. We're covering them again. We're covering all of them again. We're covering all of them again. We're covering them. Glory! Oh, God Almighty. Hallelujah! Oh, God. Oh. We're covering them now, you know. Prayer team, come up. Come right up here. Come right up here. Counselors, come on right up. Come, come down a little more. We'll cover, we're surrounding you. And the devil, the thing is just a, a, an exercise this. A decision this for Christ. A decision this for God, you know. Oh, hallelujah. Come, come, come. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Everybody, all of us, we're going to pray and cover them now in the name of Jesus. Come. Come, come, come. Put your hand on somebody. Touch somebody. We believe in laying his hand. The preacher said that we believe it. We, hallelujah. We believe it makes a difference when we lay hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Oh, almighty creator, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you one more time. Thank you, God! Thank you! God, what a mighty God you are. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for breakthrough.
thank you for break free thank you for deliverance thank you for victory thank you god thank you 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 in the neck of toro mama yo last yo koto oh god almighty in the name of jesus our oh god in the name of jesus do a work in them i, I curse oh god every every trap and every plan and every scheme that satan has oh hallelujah to railroad them and we say we send them through now by the power of almighty god we send them through now oh god almighty this is a decision that will last and god you're gonna make her walk her through and you're gonna walk with her in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We know time is going, but when we're doing this work, if we don't have to go we stay because oh god almighty hallelujah when this work is being done if we don't have to move out we stay because this is the greatest work the church has to do we don't have anything greater than this to do. hallelujah oh what a blessing 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 I, 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 every one of you who has come tonight, if it's possible any at all, I need to see you tomorrow evening at, at 5.30 if you can, but if you can make it before 6, but try. Maybe even if you have to come and then you leave after, if you must, but I would love to see every single one of you and all those that have gotten saved and baptized since last week if you get saved in the crusade come is your first me calling for and then the other vips i want to see you tomorrow evening 5 30 if you can but certainly at six o'clock come and shake my hand the counselors will be taking your name but all of you one by one counselors Position yourself that you can take them. Counselors, position yourself. But counselor, move a little. It's late hours now, you know. No, don't leave the converse. Leave them here. Is you just position yourself? They soon come to you. Shake my hand and go on there. God bless you. Go on. God bless you. 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 Congratulations. God bless you. Congratulations. God bless you. Congratulations. God bless you. Congrats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, give God a hand, everybody. Jesus. Come on, give God a hand. If you give God giving God a hand, everybody just give God a hand. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. What a good God. Hallelujah. God has allowed them to move out from where they are. Hallelujah. Why stay we here and perish just for adventure? If we move, something will happen. Oh, God Almighty. I want those who are on this side to know that you're delivered already. And you're just going on now to let everybody know that food come. <laughs> the famine is over. Deliverance has come. And you're moving into another level. God bless you. God bless you. So tomorrow is the final night for this week 
let us pack out this place those on the online who are hearing me if you have not come throughout the week or throughout the two weeks come tomorrow night tomorrow night we want this to be a grand finale for the week invite somebody talk to somebody try to persuade somebody that we come tomorrow night and all those of you are coming I know you're tired all are we tired but we have to carry on the work you soon get a break you soon get a rest but let us carry on the work now because God is depending on us God bless you could you please stand with me my brothers and sisters let us pray what a word again what a word again God is just using his servant. Let us pray for her and cover her as she continues. Let us do the benediction. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance of all them which are sanctified. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. And all of God's precious people say, God bless you richly. Thank you so much for staying on and for doing God's work. God bless you. Your reward is sure.